So when you're working with pivot tables, you'll be taking one of two general approaches when it comes to your source data. That source data will either be static or dynamic. And what I mean by that is that sometimes you'll have just one set of data that will never ever change that you want to use a pivot table tool to analyze. When that's the case, we'll call that static source data. What's more common is having source data that you may need to edit or tweak or add data to moving forward um, that you want to attach a pivot table to. And in that case, your source data is dynamic. And when you're working with dynamic data, it's important to understand how to refresh and update your pivot table as you make changes to that source data. So there are two tools in the Analyze tab called Refresh and Change Data Source, which allow you to do just that. Now the difference between the two is that Refresh will update your pivot table based on changes made within the defined source data range or table. So for instance, if you're using a range of data from A1 through B100, imagine that you're drawing a box around that range. Any change that you make within that box will be captured by the refresh command. Any change that you add outside of that box, like adding data to rows 101, 102, 103, or pasting new data into columns C, D, E, or F, those will not be captured by refresh. For changes like that, you need to use the second option, which is change data source. And what this does, as you might expect, it allows you to refresh the pivot to reflect changes outside of that defined source range or table. So for instance, stacking on new columns or new rows of data. And a common reason this is used is when you have something like time series data, for instance, where you constantly need to be stacking new data on uh, to capture the most up-to-date data. Um, when you have a case like that, the change data source option will be helpful. And also we'll talk through some pro tips specifically related to working with growing source data um, in the following lecture as well. Um, but a little sneak preview at that pro tip. When you are working with dynamically growing or changing data, there are two really helpful tips here. You can either format your source data as a table, or you can use column-only range references, so no row references, to help you work with data that's changing. And again, I'm going to talk through that in the, uh, the next lecture, but for now I want to go through some of the basics with refresh versus change data source. So let's jump into Excel and take a look. OK, so here we are in the IMDb movie database. First and foremost, let's just delete uh, this new sheet that we had created in the last lecture. And if we go ahead into Pivot Table Tools, Analyze, you'll see this little data pane here with those two options, Refresh and Change Data Source. So as a reminder, if we click Change Data Source, it will tell us exactly how we're defining that source data. And in this case, we're looking at a uh, data range from A1 through R3726. And if you scroll down, you can see that, that green box that's surrounding the data. So you can press OK. And now let's practice using the refresh option first. So I'll jump into my source data tab and scroll up to the top. And why don't we just make one change to one of these uh, data points just to show you how it works. So. Um, row 5, this movie called 42nd Street. I'm just going to arrow over to the gross revenue uh, cell here in Q5. Right now it's 2.3 million. Let's just manually change that to something really obvious like 9999999. So I've manually made that change. I made a change within the confines of my source data. If I go back to pivot, first thing we'll do, let's just unfilter and instead of looking by genre, let's pull that into the filters, and let's pull title into the rows. Now if I scroll down 42nd Street here in row 55, that's, that's the movie that we're interested in. And you'll notice that it still reflects that $2.3 million gross revenue because the pivot doesn't know that I've made any change to the source data yet. So to tell the pivot table, hey, I've made a change to the source data, please update to reflect it, that's where we go into Pivot Table Tools and press Refresh. So you can see that 2.3 million changed to that series of nines that we added right there. And it's as simple as that. So that's how you use Refresh. So let's go back. I'm just going to, you can leave it if you want. I'm going to change it back to 2.3 million. And now that's an example of making a change within 
uh, a specific source data array. Um, another kind of nuanced point is that if I were to add a new column here in column S, the pivot table refresh option would not see that data because it's outside of the range. But if I right click column R and insert a new column from somewhere within that box we drew around the range, and let's just name this new column just as an example, that will be reflected by refresh. Even though I've created a new column, since I created it within the range, it actually told Excel to expand that range to now extend through column S instead of R. So back in my pivot, I'm going to scroll down to my field list so we can see pivot table tools. When I press refresh, you'll see that new column uh, show up right there. And vice versa, if I right click and delete that column, go back into the pivot and refresh again, there you go, it disappears. Um, so now let's talk about change data source. A uh, perfect example is if we you know, added a new column in S, or uh, what might be actually more likely is adding data somewhere to the bottom. So I'll give you a more specific example um, when we dive a little bit deeper in the next lecture. But for now, let me just write sample title here in row 3727. And if we go to our pivot and we hit refresh, nothing's going to change because it's still only going through row 3726. So what I would have to do is I'd have to go to change data source and scroll all the way down and I can either reselect by dragging a new range or I can just change the 3726 to 3727 and press OK. And if we click that button again and scroll down, you'll see that it now includes the new row that I added. Now when we scroll down all the way to the bottom, there's our new sample title. Obviously I didn't add any uh, data in there so it'll just show up as blank, but it's now included. So that's an example of how to capture a change made outside of the defined source data range using the change data source options. So that was the manual option. There are at least two ways to do this a lot more uh, efficiently, which we're going to talk about next. So stay tuned.